Hey, Sven here. I've been thinking about what has changed in my work life over the past two years in terms of productivity and efficiency. I've always worked quickly and had a high output, but if I just look at the last two years, I realize that my productivity and efficiency have easily doubled or maybe even tripled. And that's because by now, I have a whole bunch of tools in my tool stack that take a lot of work off my hands. Work that I either used to have to delegate to others because I couldn't do it myself, or that used to take up an incredible amount of time and now goes much, much faster. And which tools those are and what my current tool stack looks like, that's what I want to show and talk about in this video, what I actually use. I'm Sven, I'm an entrepreneur, and I've been working on process optimization and quality for over 33 years not just in business, but in all areas of life. And much of what I know and can do today, I've learned through trial and error and from my own experience. And I know what really works. And in my videos, I want to show you how you can use intelligent process automation profitably for yourself and your business. And if you're not quite sure where to start or if you need support, just book a free call with me. You'll find the link below this video. Okay, let's get started. So. In the last 24 months, I've actually counted because I have a big list. I have looked at, tried out and tested 238 tools. And today, today, uh, I probably have about 15. I haven't actually counted them and they don't do the job entirely on their own. But for the most part, things are automated and much, much faster. And above all, they also handle tasks that I couldn't do myself before because I had to hand them over to others um, or to agencies or to some kind of specialists. And I want to show you here what my current tool stack, my AI tool stack looks like. These are the tools I work with more or less every day. And this is also my personal system that allows me to achieve much more impact with less effort. Let's start with the tools I use for thinking and for creating things. At the very top of the list, right at the center, and still pretty much without interruption, is JGPT. Basically, for me, everything starts there. All ideas, all strategies, all texts, code. JGPT has become my thinking partner. I use it to understand things, to structure them, but also to create them. And I believe that no tool has changed my work as much as JGPT has. And from time to time, I also use others like Claude and Gemini and so on. But if I have everything in one place, then it's extremely difficult for me to switch and use something else or to switch to another tool every week just because a new version comes out. And what's really important here is actually all these personal settings, my memory, the projects I can use in there, and especially the advanced audio mode, which I use regularly because I want to talk to the system and have a dialogue and not just sit there and type something all the time. And that brings me right to the second tool, which is Whisperflow. It's a transcriber, a live transcriber, and in my opinion, it's currently the best one out there. It works in real time. In any app, and I speak my thoughts, I dictate my emails, my prompts, and basically Whisper just transcribes everything I say. And that's something where I have to say, well, I'm easily three times faster than typing because it doesn't just transcribe, it also improves the text. For example, if I stutter or say something incorrectly, it actually turns it into better sentences and that saves an incredible amount of time and that's why it's one of my most important tools because I use it all day long in all my other tools. Then I do a lot of image generation. Image generation on the one hand for myself, on the other hand for various social media things, but also for presentations, for visualizing different things. And at the moment, there are three different tools that I mainly use. That's either GPT Image 1, meaning the image generator from JGPT, Flux from Black Forest Labs in Freiburg, or Nano Banana, although I mainly use the latter to modify images. So, for example, if you look at these images, you see here, for instance, put me in a samurai outfit. For example, that is something that truly works best with Nano Banana. And basically, I do absolutely everything with these incredible tools. It is just really, really cool. And then on top of that, I also have a podcast that we publish every single day, our dedicated AI podcast, as well as my very own personal texts 
For example, on my website, I convert my blog posts into MP3s using my own voice with 11 labs. So you can also listen to the article. I have some short videos that I use, which I publish on social media. And they should also reflect my real mood. That's why with 11 labs, I didn't just use the simple voice synthesis, but actually the so-called professional version. So the version where I absolutely have to talk into the microphone for a very extended period, perhaps three whole hours, just to finally achieve a voice that sounds incredibly real, genuinely authentic, and remarkably close to my very own natural speaking voice. And since I'm already talking about shorts and so on, I regularly make videos where I use my different avatars for them, and I make all of those with HeyGen. I use HeyGen to generate entire videos from these texts, which is all completely automated, and that way I can use my avatar in all sorts of different situations. And not just for myself, but also for other videos where, for example, I use pre-made avatars from H&M. When it comes to videos, it's not just about avatar videos, there are also so-called normal videos, so to speak. For those, I primarily use Kling. Kling is especially good when you have a starting image and an ending image, where in a way, you upload the first image and say, this is where the scene should start and this is where the scene should end. That works incredibly well with Kling. However, it could be that similar to the image generators, I will also start using VO3 and Sora here. You really have to stay on top of things because this field is developing extremely fast. 2025 is the year of video generators. That was already clear last year. And what has happened there in the last 12 months, that's really sensational. So that's pretty much everything for now when it comes to generative things. And then I have all the things I need for automation. So for example, putting processes into action, automating processes. And our main tool for that, and my main tool is Mac.com. You can think of it as a kind of backbone. In the end, it connects everything. All the systems and all the modules that I show here in this video, everything comes together there. Once such a process is set up, it runs dozens of times a day if necessary, and usually runs without errors. Unless, of course, the systems are having some kind of outage again. And what's crucial here is that I don't just have a process that's automated, but this is also where the capabilities of AI really come into play. That's how the real benefit is created. For example, when the things generated by such AI systems are actually implemented in a process like this. We are a make partner, and over the past few years, it has really continued to develop in great ways, and it's a lot of fun to work with the system, especially because its visual interface makes it very, very easy to understand. When things get a bit more complex, or for example, if I need a local installation for a client project because it shouldn't be hosted in the cloud, or if it's sometimes a bit more complex and demanding in terms of technical requirements, meaning developer know-how is needed, then we use N8N, or I use N8N. With that, I have a bit more control, and above all, the whole topic of having our own servers and data protection comes into play. And yes, this digital sovereignty in a certain way. So that's the topic of automation. When it comes to collaboration, I first use Airtable. For me, Airtable is like a kind of foundation, because unlike something like Google Sheets or Excel, it has much more intelligence, since it really functions like a database. All the data comes together there, we have the projects in there, all the content, a campaign. It's flexible and also has a relational structure. But that means I also have these relationships between the individual tables mm -hmm. and I can link it perfectly with automations. And that gives me a whole lot of structure. What I've been doing for, I don't know, I've been using Trello for more than 10 years now. Trello is my personal Kanban, which I use to organize my work. And without Trello, none of this would really work properly. I plan my week and my days there, and I bring a lot of structure and prioritization into it. And Trello is super easy to use. It's visual, it's focused, it's fast, and it's always synchronized across different systems. So any idea I have is always just one click away and immediately ends up in Trello as a card. Yes, uh, HubSpot is also a very crucial tool for me because with it, we have everything related to customer relationships, CRM, sales, and all sorts of things in one place, in one system. 
And without HubSpot, we would lose track of all the inquiries, projects, and sales activities we have. And for me, it's like this. It might not be the best system, but it's the one that, in terms of cost, since I can use the free version, by the way, I recently made a video about that. It's the system that works best for us. And that's why it really is a very central system for us. Yeah, then what saves an incredible amount of time and also helps to have better meetings are systems like TLDV, whose core function is to transcribe and record meetings. And for me, that's been an absolute game changer in collaborating with others because in the past, it was always like you had to, you take notes, but you're distracted because you're focused on writing and you end up missing something someone says. Accountability gets lost because sometimes it just turns into a chat session and no one writes down who is doing what by when. And that works with tools like these. And I use TLDV. It's simply the best for me, works best with the German language. It summarizes the meeting. I get the transcript sent to me and then using my own automation, I extract the to-do lists and for example, enter the tasks into my Trello. So that's absolutely awesome. And I also think that communication with others in online meetings has gotten much better since then. Yes, and then what I'm doing right now, Loom serves two purposes for me. On the one hand, it's so that I record videos like what I'm doing right now, so that means this video is a Loom video, but I also use Loom for communicating with clients. That means, for example, I create documentation by recording a video or in asynchronous communication with my team. If I have an idea, I record it with a Loom video and then post it in Teams or Slack or wherever we happen to be working. That's also something that saves an incredible amount of time and therefore money. And above all, it's asynchronous, which means the recipient can watch it whenever it suits them. And I don't have to schedule a separate meeting every time. Yes, and last but not least, there's another major backbone for me, and that's Google Workspace. Google Workspace covers everything. Email, calendar, documents, sheets, slides, drive. For me, it's absolutely unthinkable to work with any other system. We also use Microsoft Office in other companies, but if I have a choice, it's always Google Workspace for me. It's faster, it's simpler, and above all, it brings everything together in one place in a way that's easy to understand. And especially now, with what's just been released, Google Enterprise for Workspace, that will probably change a lot when it comes to these kinds of tools and systems. So that was my tool stack that I work with. These tools are no coincidence. As I mentioned at the beginning, I looked at 238 tools. These are the ones that remained, or rather the ones I use all the time. They also work together and are interconnected, including in all the automations. And that's also how I work differently now. So I work in a more connected way, more automated and more focused. Maybe you can also make good use of one or another of these tools. By the way, below the video, you'll find some affiliate links which sometimes give you things like a free month and so on. Just take a look and click the links and you'll be taken to the respective sign-up pages. Have fun with it and see you next time. Ciao.